Hello, this is Scott. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where we talk about a variety of different data science topics um, as well as we cover data science platforms, analytics platforms, including commercial, non-commercial. Today we're talking about R. Continuing on with forecasting and time series in R. And today we're going to have a brief conversation about um, autoregressive methods. So AR, autoregressive methods, are essentially, um, they just use a linear combination of, of predictors, right? So we're trying to forecast a series of Y time series um, using linear combinations of the past values of the series. Essentially, uh, that's it, very simply. And we talked about this previously, but I got a little feedback and um, I wanted to do something just quick, dedicated just to AR. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate some series, um, some autoregressive series here. And then we'll be getting into more of the forecasting. In fact, we talked about ARIMA, and we'll be getting into um, looking at models, fitting models for ARIMA, as well as forecasting ARIMA. So I wanna cover just a couple of topics here. This is from Hyman and Anonoff, Ananospolis. Um, and so this is this is from their uh, book. But essentially, here we have a model equation for what an AR model looks like. Uh, we have some sort of constant and we have phi um, one time back. So for, for if we have if we're in current period yt, it's a combination, a linear combination of a constant plus phi times uh, one period back plus phi two, uh, two periods back, et cetera, up to P. So it's an ARP model. Um, these can be an AR1 model would just have one value of phi not equal to zero. Um, so that's essentially the mathematic model itself. A couple of interesting things to note. If phi is equal to zero, we have a white noise process, and we'll simulate that in just a second. Um, if phi is equal to one for an AR1 model, um, and the constant is zero, then we have a random walk. If phi is one with a constant not equal uh, to zero, then we have a random walk with drift. Um, and then we'll see that if phi is, uh, phi one is less than zero, it normally oscillates. And then we also have some model restrictions to ensure we're talking about stationary models here. Um, and the most important thing is that we can simulate all these and learn from them in R. So let's do that. The first thing I'm going to use is just a random normal function, right? So um, one of the, the very basic statistical functions within R is this R norm, random normal. And um, so I'm going to simulate from a random normal process with means standard deviation of two and uh, put 250 observations into Y and then I'm going to create a, um, uh, a par window and then a plot. I'm going to plot those actual 250 observations uh, here and then we're going to look at the autocorrelation function which we've talked about previously. So the autocorrelation measures the correlation of a current period with uh, previous time periods. So obviously one with itself is is a uh, correlation of one. And I can see here that this is random, that uh, really there is no correlation with time periods um, and the current time period. So it's a white, what we call a white noise process. The second thing I'm gonna do here, just to talk about this, is I'm gonna generate, again, 250 observations. I'm gonna put those 250 observations into a vector Y2. Then I'm going to um, generate uh, this Y2 using um, the random noise process. In other words, I'm gonna pre-fill with just random values and then I'm going to create the time series. So the time series itself will be at the current period um, from 2.2, right? Um, since I have an AR1, I'm going to be able to go one point back. Y2 is equal to uh, the 
uh, I'm sorry, at, at the current time period, it's equal to one recent value, the most recent value plus the noise itself, right? So the most recent value of the series plus white noise, um, Y sub I. And then we're gonna plot that and then we'll take the autocorrelation function. So executing that, I get a plot of this, this random walk. Um, and then I can see that with a random walk that I'm correlated in a dampening effect too. In other words, my current value depends upon, most importantly, the last value and then two values back, then three values, then four values, and it just dampens dampens off. So that's a signature autocorrelation function for a AR1 process. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna introduce the coefficient phi. So I'm going to, uh, and we were just talking about that this will oscillate typically. So I'm gonna, Again, I'm going to just generate the same series. The only real difference here is I'm introducing this negative 0.5 um, phi into every one of the uh, observations there. So if I do that, um, I get this oscillating series, right? So I get an autocorrelation function that, that basically oscillates um, back and forth. And then um, the, just for grins, we'll use one more, we'll do one more AR1, and this is with positive phi of 0.5. And then it, signature for this series is normally a, an oscillating uh, back, but groups, right? So I have a group here, the group that are negative, typically a group positive and negative. In fact, we can just rerun that same series and we can see our same commands we'll see kind of this series um, and then one more time and we'll kind of see that again a, a group um, above their positive correlation then negative correlation then positive correlation for phi equal to 0.5 the other thing that we could do is we can look at this um, arima function so you can use help to look at the parameters and and examples there We'll generate one, but this is very useful. Um, you know, going back to roots is, is nice because we can see exactly what this is doing for an AR1. Once we get into more complicated models, R has, of course, a host of functions that automate things. So right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an AR2, 250 observations. Um, phi one is negative 0.5, phi two is 0.3. Those are within the bounds that we were talking about earlier. And I'm gonna have a standard deviation of one. I'm gonna create the series. The average here is close to zero, negative 0.4. I'm gonna plot that. And then the autocorrelation um, function here and then the dampening down, right? So negative for the first, positive for the second, and then the dampening of those um, which you would expect. Okay, so I will end there. Um, I hope you can join me next time when we talk about moving averages.